Welcome to another video in the SCEP Sorhana Fixed Assets playlist. When it comes to fixed asset acquisition, sometimes there are differences between the different accounting standards. So for example, we purchased an asset today, and according to IFRS, it should be posted as an asset. But according to the local accounting standard, it does not qualify as an asset and it should be posted as an expense. This situation is called unilateral assets, and we can configure and use it in SCEP. In the video today, I will show you how to use unilateral assets in SCEP S4HANA 2021. Here I have my two screens. On the one on the left, I will process the transactions. And on the one on the right, I will display the fixed asset values so we can see the impact of anything we do on our fixed asset. For the business case today, I will start by creating an asset and I will active deactivate the IFRS postings. So the business case is we have an asset that can only be posted as a fixed asset in US GAAP. But according to IFRS, it should be expensed from day one. It is an expense. So when we post the fixed asset acquisition, we will see the accounting entry that will be posted to both IFRS and GAAP. I will start by creating the fixed asset. So I will show you the fixed asset master data and then I will post the acquisition and then I will post a retirement so we can see also the impact of fixed asset retirement on unilateral assets. So first to create the asset, let's go to transaction AS01 and I will create an S class 2000. Description, let's say uni2 and then time dependent cost center is 1000. We have already done all of this before and then go to depreciation area. Now for the business case today, I will deactivate the IFRS area. So click here on deactivate. And since we deactivated this one, also the IFRS group currency will be deactivated automatically. And I will only keep this one for book depreciation and this is for US gap. And here the useful life, let's say four years. Now, once we did this, we are telling SEP that according to this accounting principle, whatever we are going to post to this asset should be expensed directly and will not be posted as a fixed asset. So we can either deactivate the area manually like I did here in the asset class or we can actually create another asset class that has this area deactivated by default and in this case it will only be used for unilateral assets. So whatever works for you, you can use. So in my case here I have a normal fixed asset class that I use for machinery equipment but for this asset only I'm going to deactivate the, the IFRS areas. Now save. And the, the S number is 27. So on this screen, I will display the fixed asset master data values. So AS03. And this is our asset. Click on asset values. And so far, the asset has no values. Now let's go back to the screen on the left and post fixed asset acquisition slash n f-90. Document date, posting date, posting key 31. The account is the supplier account. So this is accredited to the supplier. The amount, let's say 10,000. And on the other line, I will have a debit to a fixed asset. So posting key 70 and the asset number is 27. Transaction type is 100, the same amount. And the tax code is V0 and post. Now here is the interesting part. So let's refresh the asset explorer and see how SEP treated this unilateral asset. So here is our acquisition for 10,000. First thing you can see here is on the left, we only have the USA gap areas but we don't have the, IFRS, uh, the IFRS areas because we deactivated them so we can no longer see them here in the depreciation areas. Second thing is if we double click on the transaction here and then go to environment, document environment, accounting documents to see all the accounting documents that were posted we can see the three accounting documents. This is the standard thing that happens for any asset but these entries are different from normal assets. So first we have this common shared accounting entry that's posted to both 0L and 2L, to both, to both IFRS and US GAAP. And if we check this accounting entry, this is the normal entry. We have a credit to the ac accounts payable to the supplier and we have a debit to a technical clearing account that we assign in the asset configuration. This is the normal thing that's posted whenever we post a fixed asset acquisition. Now let's go back and check the other entries. So we have the entry for 0L and another for 2L. If we check the one for 0L first, so here we have a debit to the asset. So this is the fixed asset, machinery and equipment. And we have a credit to the technical clearing account. So this account now is cleared. And we, the value we have is in our fixed assets. So this is according to US GAAP. Now let's go back and check. Uh, sorry, let's go back to the accounting entry. Again, environment, 
accounting documents. Now let's check the accounting entry for 2L. And this is the different thing for unilateral assets. As you see here, we have a debit to unilateral asset expense. I called it this because to make it easy to understand, but of course this account can have any description you want. But for me, I have it uh, named unilateral asset expenses. And as you see, this account starts with a six. It is a P and L account and expense. And we have a credit to the technical clearing account. But now you see, this is for IFRS. So the asset was posted directly to expenses, which means it's not a fixed asset according to IFRS. And any transaction we do for this asset from now on will have no impact at all on IFRS because it was posted as an expense. It's not an asset. So now, as you see, this is an asset. Uh, this is an expense posting. And this is the meaning of unilateral assets. So unilateral asset is the asset that is posted as a fixed asset according to one accounting principle, but posted as an expense according to another. And you, now you see how this can be tre treated in SAP. Now let's go back. And of course, as you expect, if we post a depreciation to this asset now, the depreciation will only be posted to US GAAP because this is the only area that has the fixed asset, but nothing will be posted to IFRS. And if we post retirement, it will also be the same case. Let me show you this. So let's go back here on the left and go to the fixed asset uh, scrapping transaction, ABAVN. I already explained everything about the fixed asset retirement, so I will go to directly to the transaction. Here we have our fixed asset number. And here the document date is today, posting date, asset value date, the same. And let's say I'm going to post a partial retirement of 50%. So we retire 50% from the asset from current year acquisition and the post. Now let's refresh here. We have our retirement, double click, check all the accounting entries, environment, document environment, accounting documents. And we only have one accounting document. If we check this accounting document here, it's posted to ledger group 0L. And nothing is posted to 2L because according to IFRS, this is not a fixed asset. Here we have our normal accounting entry. We have a credit to the fixed asset reconciliation account and we have a debit to a loss account. And we don't have anything to, to post to accumulated depreciation because we did not post any depreciation to this fixed asset. So now you understand how unilateral assets work, how we can create the fixed asset master data, what is the impact of this on the different S transaction like acquisition, retirement, any other transaction you post will have similar impact for unilateral assets. I hope this was easy to understand. Let me know what other videos you want me to add to the fixed S playlist. I still have some planned videos such as the intercompany and the intracompany asset transfer. But of course, if you have any other ideas, please leave me, leave me some comments and I will do my best to add them to the playlist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.